available to answer questions as our Mr. Lonnie, is it possible the court would just admonish without instructing him to file a new brief for the Supreme Court? I think that the court will make a ruling on his ethical conduct, or in this case, unethical conduct, and I think that uh, it will likely tell him under a writ of mandamus that he has to correct the pleadings so that the United States Supreme Court pleadings do reflect the position of the state of Washington. Is it the position of the state or is it just his stated opinion earlier? Has the state ever come out officially through the legislature, through the governor, through anybody with a, a statement that our position is that only the mandate is unconstitutional. No, but Mr. McKenna agrees his position as well is that only the mandate is unconstitutional and that the remainder of it should stay in effect. But I would note also that Washington State has been a leader in protecting women's health. Um, many of the provisions protecting women's health that are in the Affordable Care Act are, are already in our state law, but not the key ones that we're talking about today. Also, Washington State has twice enacted legislation that uh, implements the Affordable Care Act. So I think we are, as a state, on record as supporting these other provisions. Well, why now, instead of when the um, lawsuit that's before the Supreme Court was filed? Well, I think, as, as Claire mentioned, as soon as uh, the second anniversary came around, I think people really started to understand that the battlegrounds of this court case were going to be over severability, especially when the United States Supreme Court's Court asked for a briefing on that subject. And so it was at that point that Rob McKenna really had the choice of whether he was going to stand with the people or whether he was going to stand behind this partisan vote. And it's at that point that he made the wrong decision. So that we wish we could have started this earlier because we actually would be farther along now. So you're, you're saying the timing isn't political at all with the um, governor's campaign right now? Uh, the timing is about the United States Supreme Court case. But the follow up on that, uh, you, know, you have filed uh, lawsuits against other gubernatorial candidates. So why shouldn't we think that this is part of the campaign? There's a legitimate issue for these women, but isn't this also part of the campaign? Well, I, I guess I would sure. turn that over to someone else. Yeah, this case is really about Rob McKenna's performance as the Attorney General and critically about the important issue of women's health care. And I don't know, I think that Anisia shared her views on this as well, um, if you'd like to. I, I mean, all I can- Please, please stand. All I can say is that, you know, I didn't get cancer for political reasons and I just haven't done 20 months of treatment for a governor's race. I want to be treated fairly. And I want to be taken care of, and that's what I deserve. And I don't care who's governor, I don't care who's attorney general, I just want whoever that person is to care about the people of the state. And I think that's the issue here, and I think that's what the focus ought to be. Um, Noel, can you, you mentioned um, false and misleading statements. Can you give some examples? Well, they're all on our website, and in fact, we also have a video from his uh, Rob McKenna's official website. but. Over and over again, for example, Mr. McKenna told the people of Washington that his uh, lawsuit was not going to invalidate the entire act, but was and it would have no effect on the entire act, but would only affect the individual mandate. He also tried to underplay the importance of his ethical breach by saying that the Obama administration had the same position as he did, which is patently false. That's of course the Obama administration so supports separability and wants to keep these provisions in place. Yeah, well, I, I still don't quite understand the question of the timing. You know, the, the Supreme Court asked for those briefs on separability many, 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 many months ago. Again, if that was an issue, why not file this early? Well, I, I wasn't asked to file it earlier, and some of you may be paying closer attention to this than me, but I have only seen these briefs and recognize uh, the ethical breach very recently as we were preparing in the last three weeks. Um, 
you know, more power to them if other people were following it more closely and understood this, and if they had brought the suit sooner, we would be further along right now. Who's going to pay for this lawsuit? Um, right now, we're not being paid, but anyone who wants to make a contribution, we would be accepting them, and we have received some contributions from our plaintiffs. Yes? Could you explain severability? Yes, that's a good question. Um, essentially, to attack on the Affordable Care Act in the United States Supreme Court is focused on the individual mandate. And that's the only thing that's being attacked. If it is held severable, then the court